Hello everyone and welcome to Season 7, Episode 8 of Pro Wrestling's Top 50. I'm your host Travis McNeil and today we continue our countdown of the Top 50 matches in Chikara history with match number 43 on our list which is the Mask vs. Mask match between Dasher Hatfield and Boomer Hatfield from the Chikara Anniversario Scotch Mist event held on May the 26th of 2019. Um, this is a match that to me is, you know, the sum of its parts is greater than the individual parts. And it's a match that really takes all of these different storyline elements and its post-match and everything and puts it all together to create a tremendously satisfying package. If you've been watching the series for a little bit, you know, I've talked about at different points, you know, taking into account, you know, post-matches and angles and things like that. Uh, you know, and, and using them towards the ranking of certain matches. And basically my own personal criteria is, is that if all of the extracurriculars in the match contribute to the story of the match itself, then I look at it as one complete package. If, you know, all of the extracurriculars, you know, advance different things but don't directly relate to the story of the match, then I count them separate. So the example that I'll give is if you watch my ECW countdown, um, I said that I thought Raven versus Terry Gordy and all of the aftermath with it is probably the single best segment that ECW ever produced. That said, all of the aftermath doesn't directly relate to the Terry Gordy versus Raven match. So it ranked lower on my list than it would have, you know, otherwise. But this is a match where, you know, all of the post-match and everything, it directly advances what we just saw in the match. So I do look at it as a complete package, hence its inclusion on this list. Um, and not to say the match itself, Bell the Bell, isn't great. It's very, very good and it tells a great story, but you add everything else onto it and it just becomes an incredibly satisfying package. Uh, Dasher Hatfield is, in my opinion... You know, if I was going to, to run down, you know, the top 10 performers in Chikara history, um, he would be that sneaky, you know, number nine or number 10 on that list. He's someone that, uh, you know, just really grinded, came in as creator wrestler, um, you know, much love to, to Avery Good professional wrestler, but, you know, was terrible when he started and, you know, worked his ass off, went through a couple of, you know, really mediocre gimmicks. If you were unfamiliar with the Creator Wrestler gimmick, it was actually kind of neat. Uh, so Chikara brought in this really generic looking luchador and had the fans basically submit their ideas for a gimmick for him. Um, with the stipulation being that every year kind of the cartridge would get, you know, the save file would get wiped. And, you know, you would restart this Creator Wrestler anew again. Um, he came in, he was Moscow, the communist bovine, um, which was, you know, just a little bit of a ripoff of, you know, ISW's Muhammad the terrorist cow, in my personal opinion, uh, you know, Canadian bias there. Um, but, you know, he wore a big, you know, mascot suit and it, it you know, hard to maneuver in, um, you know, not, not a super successful gimmick for him. He came back as Ultimo Breakfast, which was kind of weird, um, but he finally, you know, struck gold. He was given the Dasher Hatfield gimmick. It really worked for him. At that point, he was really starting to improve in ring. The fans connected to him. Uh, he started to tag team the throwbacks along with Sugar Dunker Dunkerton, now known as Shug D. Um, and, you know, Chikara made the very wise decision at the request of the fans to not reset, you know, that creator wrestler and Dasher Hatfield would be his gimmick, you know, from there on forward. Um, a great, you know, baby face in the truest form, um, but it eventually led to a, a bitter heel turn that he had um, that, you know, I, I'm sure we'll talk a little bit more about on this series, so I won't get into it too, too much now. Um, but Boomer Hatfield came in, you know, in the twilight of the Chikara years uh, as the son of Dasher Hatfield. So yes, you know, this match was father versus son in a kayfabe sense. You know, my top match of 2021 was Steve Carino versus Colby Carino. That was a true father versus son match. This one, you know, storyline purposes only. Uh, but it doesn't, you know, mean that it's it's not great. Uh, so how do we get the mask versus mask for this? So they built this grudge, you know, Dasher was the, the unfair you know, father, you know, kind of starting to border on that, you know, whole like abusive father thing, you know, very, you know, verbally, especially to his son, you know, telling him that he's, you know, not man enough and doesn't have the guts to do things and he's not strong enough. Um, so it led to this rivalry 
and uh, the new Chikara director of fun, um, Sidney Bacabella, basically in a flex of his muscle to show that he had the power, put these two against each other at the main event of Anniversario and made it mask versus mask. So, you know, they couldn't deke out and, you know, have a disputed finish. There must be a winner. Someone's losing their mask. Um, this match, it starts, you know, with a, a great kind of innocent, you know, innocent enough opening sequence where, you know, Dasher, he shoots a half and almost wins a minute in, and they start with very basic wrestling. You know, Dasher gets a double leg takedown, you know, doesn't pounce. Um, Boomer gets a takedown, same thing, kind of gives his dad a little bit of breathing room, um, but ends up giving Dasher a, a good game pat on the butt, which is a Dasher Hatfield staple, um, and that kind of set his dad, you know, a little bit over the edge. Uh, but led to a big slap, Boomer hit him back, and from there the match really picked up. Uh, the story that we have here, we actually have dueling stories in this match. So you take all of the father-son stuff, um, but you also have Dasher Hatfield becoming increasingly more desperate as this match goes on. Like I said at the start, you know, you could tell he's, yes, he's mad at his son, but it's also, it's still, you know, his own flesh and blood of his own seed. So, you know, he does take it a little bit light on him and doesn't want to hurt him. But as the match progresses, he gets more and more desperate, gets more and more vicious, and starts to resort to more and more underhanded tactics. Whereas on Boomer's side, he's clearly outmatched. Dasher Hatfield, not only his dad, not only a veteran wrestler at this point, He's also the Chikara Grand Champion, the top dog in the promotion, and Boomer is a very undersized rookie. But Boomer's story within the match itself really is all about persistence. It's being able to weather the storm, to survive the big moves, and keep going back to his game plan that he has. And his game plan in this match is a guillotine choke. And they do such a really good job establishing that this is a move that Dasher is fearful of. Um, Boomer gets it, you know, out of nowhere early on, and Dasher suplexes out of it. Boomer gets it back in, you know, again, out of nowhere a little bit later on in the match, and as that desperation for Dasher starts to pick up, you know, he's near the ropes, and he ends up just throwing his body through the ropes that sends him and his son crashing to the floor. Um, during all of this, uh, Molly McCoy, um, now known as Shea McCoy, uh, who is Boomer Hatfield's, you know, in storyline step cousin, uh, but also his tag team partner, you know, is very much in the middle of this family conflict and she's at ringside and they do a really good job, you know, with the camera going to her at several of the big, you know, pivotal, more emotional points of the match. And it shows her, you know, clapping along with the crowd and trying to rally both, you know, competitors really caught in the middle of, of everything. And, you know, we would uh, eventually end up getting a, a playoff with her, you know, at, at the end of the match that, that worked really good. Um, like I said, Dasher gets more and more vicious throughout the match. He gets a big suplex onto the ring apron, you know, lots of vicious kicks. Um, he shows desperation late in the match. And in this great callback that I loved, um, Dasher Hatfield's biggest disappointment in his career, in my opinion, was when he was unsuccessful in his attempt to win the grand championship from Juan De Francisco de Coronado um, at the end of um, at the end of 2017. It seemed like it was Dasher's moment. He lost in that match, and the way he lost was uh, Juan turned his mask around and caught him with an inside cradle. So there's this great moment late in the match where Dasher is so desperate that he hasn't been able to put his son away. You know, he's countered some of his big moves. He's kicked out of some of his big moves. Um, so he ends up, you know, doing the, the mask turnaround and hits a big, you know, tries to go for a big jackhammer. But this time it's Boomer that gets a small package out of it and it almost puts Dasher away. So it was this great callback to that match. Um, Dasher, you know, tries his feet on the ropes. All of these dirty tricks. Um, late stage of the match, Boomer gets a great run of a bunch of near falls. And they do this, you know, big moment on the top where, you know, Dasher goes for the grand slam. He's kind of like coup de gras finish and Boomer fights out of that. And Boomer goes for a Hurricane Rana off the top and Dasher just plants him with his brutal super bomb from the top. And it almost becomes one of those, you know, I had to go so deep into my arsenal. I had to get so brutal and vicious to put my own son away. And there's maybe just that hint of regret. Uh, but, but when he gets the two count, Boomer like kind of sits up and grabs that guillotine choke that he'd been going for all match. But at this point, you know, Boomer, you know, Dasher doesn't have that size advantage. He doesn't have that vertical base that allowed him to suplex out of it early in the match. 
He's not near the ropes. He's right in the middle of the ring, so he can't dive to the floor like he did, you know, at the midpoint of the match. He's stuck in this hold, and he has no choice but to tap out. This was a huge upset, a huge moment for young Boomer Hatfield. Um, he put away his father, the grand champion. And, you know, Chikara, they've always done a really great job with their Lucha de Apuestas matches where they put this stipulation on, you know, be it mask versus mask, hair versus hair, mask versus hair, whatever the case may be, and they follow through. Sometimes on TV wrestling, you know, you get all these schmoz finishes, so nobody ends up losing anything. Not here. Boomer um, Hatfield, you know, he, he wins the trophy. He wins the mask of his father. But at the end of the day, that's his dad. And he can't bring himself to unmask him and, you know, tells him, like, keep your mask, Dad. I, I, I don't want it. And just in this great turn of events, you know, Dasher ends up unmasking himself and throws it at Boomer, basically telling him um, that, you know, he's weak and he couldn't even, he could beat his dad, but he couldn't even go through with unmasking him. So how will he ever be a man? How will he ever be a grand champion if he doesn't have that killer instinct? And this leads to Molly McCoy diving into the ring and throwing a towel over Dasher's face and, you know, yelling at Boomer that she'll never forgive him for what he done in, in winning this match. And, you know, I wondered at the time and, and, you know, even now watching the match back, well, if Dasher had won, you know, would she have had the same reaction to Dasher? You know, if Boomer was the one unmasked. Um, this is just a really great, you know, whole package. Um, you add in the post-match, the story and everything, and it comes together and you put it in front of a really hot, you know, Chicago crowd. Um, Chicago was always a great stop for uh, for Chikara at the Logan Square Auditorium. Um, so you kind of put that all together and you get this excellent, ex excellent contest. One of the, the best matches of the, the twilight years of Chikara, in my opinion. Um, we would end up getting, you know, a bit of a playback for this after Chikara went away. Um, we would get a tag team match with uh, the outfielders of Boomer Hatfield and um, and Shea McCoy um, taking on Dasher Hatfield. And I, I want to say it was Dan Champion, but I can't quite remember. In a two out of three falls a career versus mask match where, you know, Dasher would end up taking the mask of his son Boomer. Um, that match, you know... Kind of a cool little thing to check out. It's not great. It's certainly not up to the level of this, but kind of a great little epilogue if you were going to watch this match anyway. Speaking of watching it, you can, of course, watch all Chikara matches on independentwrestling.tv. You can subscribe to my channel here on YouTube so that you never miss a video. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Wrestling50. And please join me again next time as we continue to count down Pro Wrestling's Top 50.